Hi, I'm Jim, W6LG, your YouTube Elmer with Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room, again here in Rockland, California. After reviewing a few questions on the extra class exam that discussed grounding, I decided to take a look at another area, one that um, I have a bit of experience in, and, and that is linear amplifiers or RF power amplifiers. And I quickly came across this question, and let me see if I can highlight it. Um, the question is uh, E7B09, and they say the answer is D. Uh, the question is, which of the following describes how the loading and tuning capacitors are to be adjusted when tu tuning a vacuum tube RF power amplifier that employs a Pi network output circuit. So what it's asking is, um, what's the tuning procedure for the load and tune controls when you're tuning an RF power amplifier like an Ameritron AL80 or AL82 or one of those that has a Pi network and most linear amplifiers have either a Pi or a Pi L. Pi L has just an extra coil at the end of the Pi circuit. So it says, which of the following describes how the loading and tuning capacitors are to be adjusted? And they say the answer is D. D is wrong. D says the tuning capacitor is adjusted for minimum plate current, and the loading capacitor is adjusted for maximum permissible plate current. D. I'll read that again. The tuning capacitor is adjusted for minimum play current. Okay, so that's the tune control. The load control, which is often below the tune control or to the, to the right side of it, uh, the loading capacitor is adjusted for maximum permissible play current. So in other words, you're, you're tuning for the dip. So you tune for the minimum play current, which would be the dip, and then the load control is adjusted for um, maximum permissible play current. That's not a good answer, and the reason why it's not a good answer is um, if you tune it that way, there's going to be times when the uh, amplifier will go into distortion, produce splatter. Uh, also, you can ruin tubes pretty quickly if you tune for the dip. You tune for maximum output, period. Well, not period. There's an, there's an additional step. You rotate the... Um, tune control and the load control for max out at a certain level of drive and then you increase the drive again uh, until you reach the maximum drive that the manufacturer recommends and we can look at that on uh, uh, one of the Ameritron amplifier manuals they're, they're really pretty well written um, you get to the maximum amount of drive step by step so you might start out with 20 watts and 40 watts and maybe the amp takes a maximum of 50 watts of drive so when you get to there, you're, each time you step up the drive, you adjust the linear amplifier, the RF power amplifier, for maximum output. You keep one eye on the play current, one eye on the grid current, and your third eye on the, uh, the, the power output. It's a little bit of a juggling act, but um, once you get used to doing it, it's not so hard. So you tune for max out, and that may or may not, and likely won't, occur at the minimum play current dip, the DIP. Um, just out of curiosity, let's look at the instruction manual that I happen to have downloaded some time ago to help a guy tune an amplifier um, for the uh, AL80, and I'll get to that uh, just a second. I need to point out as uh, an addition to this video that um, this tuning procedure discussed in the question and that I discuss uh, isn't specified, but it relates to the typical tuning procedure for a grounded grid amplifier, which would usually have some kind of triode. Could be 572Bs, could be 11As could, uh, in, in, um, uh, in a grounded grid configuration, could be um, 3500Zs, any number of tubes, uh, triodes in particular, or some tetrodes that are strapped as, um, are combined as a triode and, and uh, grounded. So again, this is dealing with a typical grounded grid amplifier that's not specified in the question. And um, 
I meant to point it out in the original recording, so I'm adding this little addendum to the uh, to the audio. Whiskey six Lima Golf calling CQ hello CQ CQ calling CQ hello CQ Whiskey six Lima Golf. I said the um, get this up. The instruction manuals for uh, Ameritron amplifiers are pretty well written. Everybody has a little hesitancy on tuning an amplifier because if they haven't done it before. And let's scroll down to their tuning procedure. Our suggested settings for the load control. Um, those again are just where you might start. It's probably going to end up at a, at a different point. Um, here they talk about uh, with the drive at zero, you turn on the turn the multimeter to the IP, the current position. So here's IP, HV, power output, ALC. We're going to ignore ALC for now. Power output, IP, and the grid current. And you can see the grid current meter just meters grid current because it's really important. Um, talk about keying the amplifier with it in the standby position and uh, then keying it with it in transmit and no drive. And it indicates um, idling current of 75 milliamps and then 150 depending on the play voltage. Um, let's just skip down to the last step. It says apply enough drive to indicate either 1500 watts of output or 300 milliamps of grid current. I think the tubes have a maximum grid current of slightly greater than that like maybe 350 for two tubes. Repeak, repeak, repeak the load and plate controls. The final grid current should be around 250 milliamps and 900 milliamps for plate current. Um, by peak, they're saying advance the drive to 250 mils of grid current, adjust the load and plate controls for maximum power output. It does indicate in the instructions that there may be a dip but again, step 10 is advance the drive to 250 milliamps, adjust the load and plate controls for maximum power output of 1,000 watts. That's one of, the, one of the steps. So you're adjusting, when they talk about peak, you're adjusting for maximum power output. The uh, question on the extra class exam, let's see if I can get this out of the way, describes how the loading and tuning capacitors are to be adjusted when tuning a vacuum tube RF power amplifier. Um, the tuning capacitor is adjusted for minimum play current and the load control is adjusted for maximum permissible play current. No, that's not at all how you do it. I'm going to review other questions on the exam and point out ones that I believe to be wrong. Um, if you've designed RF amplifiers, and there's a few guys that have, uh, and if you disagree with me, I'd be really interested to hear that. Um, but again, if you've got a linear amplifier, do not tune it for the dip. You tune it for max output at full drive. When, when you get there, you step your way up and drive. And then what I do is I advance the load control just a little bit so the output starts to drop. And that way, I'm sure I'm linear, uh, no matter how much drive goes into the linear amplifier. Just as a point of reference, I have built maybe uh, 10 amplifiers, uh, some really big ones and some really small ones over the last 50 years. Uh, in fact, more than that. Um, and I'm working on one right now, as a matter of fact. For me, building amplifiers is, is a lot of fun. It's one of the few things I can do. Anyway. There you go. There's another question on the extra class exam that has a poor answer. Uh, the question is uh, written okay. Again, the wording is just kind of weird. Uh, for example, they say the power ampl amplifier employs a Pi network output circuit. All right, 73. If you have not subscribed, uh, please do that. I'm trying to grow the uh, subscription um, uh, number to 50,000. And again, if you have a question, a comment, uh, either give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. If you do a thumbs down, let me know why. I'd like to hear about it. 7-3 from Rockland, California. It's late at night. And I'm going to call it quits. This is Jim, W6LG, your YouTube Elmer with Ham Radio Basics. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye-bye.